My name is Barbara Gordon, and I am a private practice dietitian working in Boise, Idaho. I enjoy conducting research and recently had the opportunity to mentor a senior health sciences student. She had elected to do an independent research project and agreed to employ the Academy's Evidence Analysis Library methodology as a framework for her research. This slide has the disclosures for our research team. In addition to myself, a graduate assistant was an active team member and a full professor helped ensure expectations for the student were reasonable and appropriate. A bit about the health sciences program at Boise State. It's designed to prepare students for a range of clinical and non-clinical health careers. Students select one of six focus areas, including general health, gerontology, health informatics and management, health policy and leadership, public health, or science. And, and though Boise State does not have a dietetics program, some of the students have a pre-dietetics focus. The program requires students to take at least three credit hours in research methods, and also permits students to further develop their research skills through an independent study course. Stephanie was a senior health science major with a focus in public health. She was enrolled in an independent study course. Her goal was to learn more about analyzing, reporting, and presenting research findings. So the first thing we did was put together our plan of attack. This slide details our approach and it highlights how we incorporated the five steps of the evidence analysis library methodology into our implementation plan. During this presentation, we'll walk through each of those steps. And as we do that, you'll see that though the research team embraced the spirit of the library's methodology, the process was significantly adapted to accommodate our resource constraints. Each full-scale academy-sponsored evidence analysis project consists of an academy staff project manager, a lead analyst, a workgroup chair, six to eight expert workgroup members, and four to 10 evidence analysts. Our workgroup for this research project was considerably more modest. Our review was conducted by a three-member multidisciplinary team with expertise in research, health science, and nutrition. Academy-led analysts offer expertise in research, study design, and bias, and how bias is handled in a study. They are also required to have a strong writing and analytical skills because they're the ones who developed the first draft of the evidence summaries and also the conclusion statements. Our lead analyst was a senior health science student who had completed research methods courses. So she was more like a lead analyst in training. I met the requirements for an RDN workgroup member and though there's usually more than one RDN on an academy project, I served as the solo dietitian on this effort. And lastly, the evidence analysts have an advanced degree, they have research experience, and full knowledge of research methodology and statistics. The graduate assistant assigned to this research project served as our evidence analyst. Given our short timeline, that is one semester, we also heavily relied on project management tools. These included a very detailed timeline which outlined the roles and responsibilities of each group member. The timeline also noted both in-person meetings and independent work assignments, and it specified due dates for individual deliverables. In an academy exercise, every article that included in the evidence analysis project is added to the articles library in an online portal. Analysts then can download a PDF of the article to read and review and abstract it, and also work group members can access the online portal to retrieve full text of the articles. 
For this project, we used Google Drive as our online portal. We selected it because the price was right, it's free, plus it's reliable, and all of us had experience using the platform. This shared workspace was key in helping us to stay on schedule. So our first step was to participate in the free online evidence analysis library training. The tutorial is really well done and it provides a comprehensive overview of the process. Each of us completed the training independently and we also spent time exploring other features and tools of the evidence analysis library. Then at an in-person meeting, we discussed what we had learned. We addressed any differences of understanding by going back and reviewing a few of the orientation slides. And thus, at the end of this meeting, everyone was on the same page and ready to dive in. The first step of the evidence analysis library process is to formulate the research question. And within the library are pre-formulated questions, which have been graded based on the strength of the evidence currently available. So example, grade one is good evidence grade two, fair, grade three, limited, grade four, expert opinion only, and grade five, not assignable, meaning there's no evidence available that directly supports or refutes the conclusion. And many of the grade five questions have this designation because the research has not yet been vetted on these projects. Thus, we selected a grade five question, and it was an adult, males and adult females, what is the dose response effect of caffeine? Our lead analyst, AKA health sciences student, did a preliminary search of the literature and she found an overwhelming number of candidate articles on the topic. So given our limited resources and time restrictions, at an in-person meeting, we further narrowed the question to in adult females what is the dose response effect of caffeine? Then once again, our lead analyst did a literature search and the quantity of abstracts produced led us to further narrow our scope. So we did this by picking an even smaller population group and we also chose a specific source of caffeine and a specific body system. So in the end, the research question we explored was in adolescents and young adults, 13 to 30 years, what is the dose response of energy drinks on the cardiovascular system? The next steps in the process are to gather research and appraise the articles. Using the evidence analysis library search plan template, the student developed our strategy. This included each of the work group members performing independent searches and storing PDFs of candidate articles on Google Drive. As the lead analyst, the student assessed all citations and abstracts and filtered articles that did not meet the eligibility requirements. She also compiled an annotated bibliography of all of the candidate articles and eliminated duplicates. We then set out to appraise the articles. For an academy project, the quality of the studies is assessed by two independent reviewers. For this project, each of us was assigned three articles. We used the evidence analysis library worksheet template and the quality control checklist for our appraisal. All of us found these tools extremely helpful in assessing risk of bias for the identified studies. At an in-person meeting, we took turns presenting and defending our appraisals. This was really an incredible experience for the student, just an excellent experience for her. We also concluded that this assessment process is laborious. And given our time restraints, we did not assess any additional articles. The next steps of the process thus are based on just the nine articles that uh, we had reviewed. For um, steps four and five, the student as the lead analyst took the lead. She synthesized the results uh, from our nine articles and she created an abstract uh, with our conclusion statement. 
then in, at an in-person meeting, we collaboratively graded our conclusion. So what were the challenges? I, I think you probably have heard this um, main challenge many a time, which was we had both time and resource limitations. The typical evidence analysis library project spans 12 to 18 months. So in order to make the process work in a 16-week semester, we had to adapt it. For example, we had to hone in on a very narrow research question in order to limit the amount of the evidence available. In addition, scoring and grading of the manuscripts is very time consuming. So our solution was to restrict the number of articles evaluated. We had initially hoped to give the student an opportunity to experience the group writing process, but uh, due to the time restraints, we abandoned that goal. The number of work group members that we had was also really modest. So since there were only three of us, we all had to be willing to participate in project tasks. And we were lucky that we had three very enthusiastic individuals who were happy to be flexible about their roles and responsibilities. And drum roll please, here is our outcome. Our outcome was a poster that the student presented at the 2016 Boise State University Undergraduate Research Conference. This is an annual forum for students from all academic disciplines to demonstrate what they learned through their research, scholarship, or the arts. Before the student put together the poster, we discussed whether to focus on our research findings and or the evidence analysis process. And in the end, given that we had artificially restricted the scope of the literature search and the number of manuscripts reviewed, we decided that we should focus on both. Thus, the title of the poster was Effective Energy Drinks on the Cardiovascular System, a Literature Review Employing a Formal Evidence Analysis Process. And in summary, we had three main lessons learned. The first is that the evidence analysis library is a viable tool for a one semester student independent research project. And in addition to pre-dietetics and dietetic students, it's a useful tool for those majoring in other allied health profession disciplines. Uh, definitely adaptations to the process are required. As I mentioned several times, we are working with both time and resource restraints. However, this model that we used where we had a student, a graduate student, and an RDN preceptor worked very well. And it really helped to reduce the burden on the, the full professor, and I'd recommend that model uh, for similar projects. And lastly, organization is really, really key. You do not need, however, to necessarily have access to the evidence analysis library project management tools. For this project, we developed a, a timeline using Microsoft Word. It has the roles and responsibilities, and we regularly updated it as needed. And then also we use Google Drive, a free collaborative workspace. So in conclusion, we found that the evidence analysis library was a valuable tool for guiding an undergraduate student independent research project.